Hi, everyone, and welcome. My name is Lauren Lovelace, and I am honored to be the Consul for Public Diplomacy and Public Affairs at the U.S. Consulate General in Chennai. Thank everyone for joining us today. I hope everyone is well and healthy as we engage virtually with you, and as we all stay home and hopefully safe and happy. I wanna thank, uh, starting off my colleagues from the US Consulate who helped to organize today's program, specifically our alumni director, Chitra Jaishankar, as well as uh, my colleague, Vinkatesh, who's helping to run the, uh, the Facebook Live. Combating gender-based violence is a US foreign policy priority. This priority relates to economic prosperity, and it relates to the, the safety and the security of our people. This topic is always important, but it's been gaining prominence recently as we all stay home in what we would all hope would be a safe space. We, we see uh, a lot of people sending around messages saying, stay home, stay, stay safe. Today's conversation is gonna to touch in part uh, on, on the challenges that happen when people stay home, but they are not safe. Unfortunately, worldwide, we've seen uh, reports of an escalation in gender-based violence. In an official statement, as the executive director of UN Women, Huzima Mulambu Nguka said, we see a shadow pan pandemic growing of violence against women. So today we recognize this issue we are grateful to the champions that are helping to combat gender-based violence worldwide and here in Tamil Nadu. We recognize government level actors, but, and also specifically grassroots and women's organizations that have played and continue to play a critically important role in preventing and responding to gender-based violence. On this topic today, I'm delighted to have two very special guests with us, Dr. Prasanna Getu, who is the co-founder of the Chennai-based International Foundation for Crime Prevention and Victim Care, or PCVC. She works to support and rehabilitate women and LGBTQIA plus persons affected by domestic and interpersonal violence. PCVC has worked uh, hand in hand with the consulate on many programs over the years. I am so inspired by the, their work. Uh, Dr. Prasanna also participated in one of our US government exchange programs on crime prevention and crisis intervention. So we always look to her for her expertise and insight. In addition, I'm delighted to welcome Mr. J. Sam Daniel Stalin, who is the Bureau Chief at NDTV Chennai. Hi, hi Sam. He is a Chevenin Scholar, the Media Project Fellow and a TEDx speaker. He's an award-winning senior television journalist, and he's a household name in India and also internationally. He's known for his credible, unbiased, and ethical television news reporting. And he also, I'm happy to say, is a, an alumni of one of our U.S. Uh, exchange, U.S. Uh, government exchange programs, the International Visitor Leadership Program. So I'm going to I'm going to welcome uh, these two experts and individuals to start to have a conversation today about how to combat gender-based violence in times of lockdown, in this time of hardship, on perhaps media coverage of gender-based violence as a public health issue, and on how we can continue to shine a light on this problem in some of the darkest times in the midst of a global pandemic. And with that, Prasanna Sam, thank you so much for joining us. We are honored to have you with us. Um, I would like to inform viewers that we will be having a question and answer session at the end of the uh, discussion. So please type your questions in the chat box that appears at the side of your screen and we'll have our guests address them uh, at the end of their comments. Um, and then I, I also just wanna say thank you to so many of our viewers who I know are personally working on this critically important issue. We recognize you as well and uh, we look forward to your comments. Sam, the floor is, the virtual floor is yours. with uh, Dr. Prasanna, I thought I'll give some statistics to help us understand the kind of challenges uh, we are dealing with with regard to 
domestic violence around the world amid this lockdown the entire country is entire world is witnessing in india for instance statistics say the crime against women the domestic violence against women has doubled since the lockdown in fact uh, if you can show that placard uh, officials say the complaints they've received on the phone in terms of the helplines have gone up from 116 from march 2nd to 8th to 247 from 23rd of march to april in fact the chairperson of the national women's commission reka sharma has said domestic violence cases have doubled than what it was before the lockdown let's also see what is the situation in say for example in the us statistics say in texas at the montgomery county the domestic violence complaints have gone up by 35% after lockdown in seattle it's up by 21% this is so important and severe that the United Nations has also responded. If you can have that placard. In fact, the United Nations Population Fund has predicted a rise in 20% in violence during this lockdown season. In an average of three months in all the 193 UN member states. And they've also said six months of lockdown would lead to 31 million additional cases of domestic violence globally. That's what the United Nations says. In fact, uh, Dr. Ramiz Alak Barao, the Deputy Director of the United Nations Population Fund has said, it's truly disturbing. And if we do not do anything about it, if we don't talk about it, if we don't ring the alarm bell, every three months, there will be an additional 15 million cases that's the level we are talking about. And uh, thank you very much for your time for joining us, uh, Prasanna. You listen to such people who suffer in silence. In fact, many call this another lockdown triggered pandemic around the world. While we suffer pandemic, while we fight pandemic because of coronavirus, there is also a large population around the world suffering this pandemic of domestic violence triggered by the lockdown. And when you listen to such people who call on the helplines, uh, what kind of nightmare they undergo at the moment, living with perpetrators 24-7, no visit to office, no chance to meet their friends. Give us a sense of the nightmare these people, these women suffer during this lockdown at home. Uh, thank you, uh, Sam, for uh, having this with me and uh, I, I i mean we uh, in, as soon as the lockdown started the the call started reducing we, we did not get many calls as we would and uh, slowly then uh, we started creating awareness in the social media and calls started increasing and uh, the the uh, uh, and it, it is more now like uh, yesterday we had about uh, 100 calls and uh, one in uh, Every fifth five calls is domestic violence, and the others are, of course, asking for grocery support and so on. Uh, people are calling us from, uh, uh, you know, middle of the night, from the restroom, from uh, the children's room, unable to speak loudly, and uh, you know, crying for help. Uh, there are cases where they've been uh, beaten up brutally, and uh, yesterday there was a case where he she complained that uh, he's been biting the kids. They have been biting the children and uh, pleading to, uh, uh, you know, to us to move her away from this place, from the place she was, she was staying. So I, I think it's uh, anywhere severe physical violence to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, and very interesting, uh, you know, in the shift of uh, uh, cases that we are getting where they are telling us that, uh, you know, and women are responsible, right? If you're going to get the groceries cleaning, the groceries cleaning, the house clean, women kind of take the responsibility like, I, you know, I have to do that. Okay. So here is the abuser taking the, the total control over that and saying that why? Why isn't this right? Why isn't that right? Uh, you know, how is it that you have not got the eggs in place? So they feel totally pressured in this uh, circumstance where they, uh, their essential services are not available. Okay. Alcohol has been seen as the root cause 
for domestic violence. But now across the country, particularly in Tamil Nadu, all the liquor shops are shut. Uh, going by that perception, the domestic violence rate ought to have come down. But we are seeing, we're seeing a rise in that. How would you explain this? Uh, we uh, work with the belief that uh, uh, alcohol is an excuse for domestic violence. Stress and anger equally are an excuse for domestic violence. Okay. Yes, there are not just men, but I think with women also, they are uh, uh, withdrawal symptoms and uh, so on. And also that uh, it is not available. I, I, I also saw in the news today that uh, men have started making alcohol uh, in their own houses. Okay. And uh, uh, yes, that, that is not uh, the reason for uh, domestic violence to increase or um, maybe the escalation, maybe the, the uh, leading to more physical violence or leading to more uh, cruel forms of violence. Yes, I agree to that. That can happen because of withdrawal or uh, not getting, because domestic violence is all about power and control. Okay, right. and uh, you know, even I, I had a case where uh, she, he had uh, recently where he's been telling her that by ask your father to send me a crate of liquor. Okay, uh, so uh, she said that uh, uh, earlier she, you know, he used to constantly keep telling me that where is that AC, where is that car. Now it's like where where is that crate of liquor that ask your father to send? Otherwise, you get out of the house. Okay. The whisper to you when they call from the child's room or uh, uh, or perhaps message you, uh, how difficult it has become for them to be in that cramped situation, not, not being able to even call for help or to share their uh, pressure with somebody else. Uh, uh, Tom, you need to repeat that for me, please. You were telling about how these women sometimes call you from their children's room or they message you. How yes. difficult has it become for them, especially to be in a cramped situation? Perhaps somebody could be in a single bedroom house or a two bedroom house where there is no you know, privacy. How difficult it is for them even to communicate with others, to seek help or to get counseled? Yeah, so we actually, that's exactly the reason we don't know how many people are going through violence because one is, uh, uh, you know, um, access to mobile phones, okay? And depending on uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, perpetrator or the partner to uh, recharge the phones, okay? And uh, uh, what about those that don't even have a phone to call? So we actually don't know how many of them are going through this abuse. And uh, coming to, you, to what you asked, it's like, uh, you know, one is that joint family where she's unable to make that call, where people are all around. Okay, and these are women who have been facing violence and when they were uh, commuting to work or uh, going somewhere to the mall or to a grocery shop, that's where they were connecting to, uh, uh, you know, uh, their support network. And that support network is also completely cut off now. Support, what kind of help do they ask and what can you offer when people call you for help at these times? Yes, we listen to them. We are, uh, we are, we give them that. The first thing we tell them is the safety uh, factors in the sense delete the call, call log number from the call log because the perpetrator could be constantly looking at our phone. Okay, and we all if and most of them, I sh I should tell you that that many of them uh, do not call us, but they are chatting with us in the middle of the right. night. Okay, and even to them, we tell them to uh, you know delete the call history. And uh, then we listen to them and uh, give them the option. If they, if they if we feel that they want to be removed immediately, then we offer rescue also. And some of them are thinking about it. The, the, the thoughts are like, uh, what will happen to the kids? How can I, at this point of time, how do I take the kids and come out? And even for themselves, it's about uh, contracting the uh, virus if they're going to step out. And what kind of place are they going to? How are they going to commute? Are we going to go and pick them up? There are, there are millions of questions that come to their mind. And some of them are taking, we ask them to think and come back to us. But when the when we they see videos where there are photographs where they are uh, in, uh, you know, bleeding or in, uh, you know, with uh, injuries and boot marks and so on, or we uh, tell them that uh, it's, it's best for them to leave the house and not uh, wait for another 
uh, time to uh, you know not, not telling them to uh, uh, tolerate it or anything like that we tell them that it's best to leave and we can arrange that in your view should they call police or should they call helpline centers like yours uh, i would definitely say uh, first thing is 100 please call 100 and then i would also give out our uh, helpline number and and i think it is not a it's not a choice but i think right. it, it's left to them because even uh, take tamil nadu uh, the national family health survey four had said about 46 percent of uh, women face some form of violence and that means every second woman is facing some form of violence and if you uh, this in the same survey if you look at it there are only about 14 percent of them who have sought some kind of support only 14 percent right. that means they are 76 percent even before the lockdown you know, even before the uh, lockdown are uh, uh, you know are not reaching out for help and it's only one person who reached the police right okay and in the given situation i i, I think even that one person is going to think twice about calling the police because uh, uh neighbors are there in their houses and everybody's there at home and if she complains about her husband she doesn't know uh she can't even imagine what is going to uh be her condition with her in-laws or will she be asked to leave there are several questions that are going to prevent her from uh, calling the uh, calling hundred. So we say we are there, and we through us also she can get to calling, uh, connecting with hundred. Right. Is there a is there a difference in terms of uh, the violence in urban areas and rural areas uh, among educated and little educated? I think it's all about uh, uh, power and control. Okay. And uh, this, uh, uh, it, it, like before the uh, before the uh, lockdown, uh, most of them must have been uh, most of the abusers must have been in this tightening of control, right? You know, phase where they are like uh, asking her, "Where are you going?" or being suspicious, or "What clothes are you wearing?" Uh, you know, uh, in that kind of a situation where either it is urban or it is rural, it doesn't matter. It is some form of uh, power and control over the uh, victim and after the lockdown it is more of, more of the uh, trigger event what we call the trigger event phase where uh, anything even before anything could trigger him okay maybe uh, she's uh, changing her job maybe she is uh, there's going to be a, she's pregnant or uh, there's a retirement anything would create uh, you know an insecurity or a, a situation of uh, uh, you know being more violent okay and i think that is that is the phase that uh, uh, you know the abusers are in right now right and, uh, so that, uh, and i think the uh, it is uh, losing control in, and i think for all of us uh, covid 19 has in some way taken away our control okay right. control of access control of mobility and everything in that way Prasanna, this lockdown has also led to situations like salary cuts, job losses, both for the women who are working and for the husbands, particularly when women lose jobs, when they uh, suffer salary cuts, or if the husbands lose jobs and salary cuts. What kind of a change in dynamics will this situation lead to in terms of the repercussions uh, in the context of domestic violence? Uh, well, uh, like I told you, that, like I just mentioned, that becomes a trigger event, okay, for them. So there's going to be an escalation of violence because uh, uh, they and uh, and also just like we spoke about alcohol, this stress is going to make make anybody. I mean, I think everybody is going to be, uh, uh, you know, in a stressful situation. Uh, and uh, uh, le let me also give an example here, like when we had the floods, for example, anywhere there is a emergency or a natural disaster, you can see domestic violence increasing. This is very common. And it's just that we didn't see it coming. Okay. And, uh, um, uh, you know, any, any situation like this, uh, like the floods we have, create something called a community trauma. Okay. And here, the community trauma is very different because the world has never seen something like that. There is no uh, certainty at all. We don't know whether uh, what's going to happen. If one is the lockdown. Is it going to be stretched? Uh, are the jobs going to be uh, there when they get back? 
uh, and all this is going to is creating a very uh, i think a new term has to be co coined on what kind of trauma is this that that uncertainty is going to bring and that's definitely going to impact women because they've been saving money if they want to leave if they're thinking of leaving the husband or probably they're supporting their uh, parents uh, and uh, you know and all all of us know that uh, for women uh, being secure economically is Uh, gives her a lot of empowerment and stability and if when that is going to be uh, a question mark then it is going to impact women a lot and women's li livelihoods i think after this is is uh, is still going to be uh, they're going to be really impacted right and tamil nadu government recently announced what they call as tamil nadu protection officer they shared numbers for various districts how does it work do you think they're off, they're able to contain this address this to a certain level oh i need you to repeat that i couldn't hear you tamil nadu government had recently released numbers of uh, tamil nadu government protection officers in various districts across tamil nadu particularly asking people who suffer domestic violence to reach out to these numbers uh, has it addressed to a certain extent Uh, we are also referring uh, uh, women uh, to the protection officers when uh, let me give you a, a, an example like there was a call that we got where uh, she said that uh, with when the lockdown uh, happened uh, he took the kids and went away okay and now the phones are not reachable she doesn't know where the children are how the children are they are about 6 and uh, 11 years old and uh, right. she doesn't know how to reach them also because she's tried neighbors everywhere but absolutely no contact and she is terrified because she wants to know how the children are doing she is crying and saying that i just want to know how the kids are doing okay so yeah. we had to uh, give her the protection officer's number because under the act she can uh, ask for custody or they can be an officer who, uh, the protection officer can connect to the uh, husband and uh, you know get the kids back so i think uh, uh, one is that uh, uh i don't know about other states but the fact that in tamil nadu are uh, the protection officers are available the one stop centers are available and uh, the 181 women helpline and 100 is uh, you know is accessible and available is a big boon for the uh, women for people like you and me uh, what are the indications we should be looking at to perhaps make a wild guess that someone could be facing domestic violence and if you know for sure in what ways during this season during this crisis time uh, we can reach out to them i think uh, be it friends or colleagues i think all of us know uh, that uh, when they ask that they have been they are victims of violence and uh, once we know that i think we should not think a lockdown means that we should not connect to them or should we have to maintain this uh, uh you know distance from them i think uh, the best we could do is to keep in touch with the, them not make them feel isolated maybe call them but we have to be aware that the perpetrator might be around and uh, should not cause more risk to the person okay so maybe some uh, code words that uh, uh you can have between uh, you and your colleague or the friend or your friend uh, to to say that is she yeah, fine or does she want you to call the police or whatever I think we have to keep in touch with. Uh, right, Prasanna, uh, we were talking about joint families, uh, also children being at home. Uh, do you think these are deterrents, or in spite of these, uh, the perpetrators manage to violate? I, I need you to repeat that. I couldn't hear you. This in this lockdown season, the children are at home largely. Do you think uh, this could be a deterrent, or in spite of that, the perpetrators manage to turn violent and uh, abusive? Uh, they are violent in front of the kids or not? And I, I'm sure that uh, the uh, children are watching, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, violence in some form uh, every day. Be it, uh, uh, you know, emotionally abusing her or gaslighting or whatever with and uh, around the dinner table. whatever it might be okay and uh, what we need to take away from uh, this uh, uh, dom what domestic violence acting like an opportunist infection here 
in the midst of this uh, pandemic is that they are going to be hundreds and hundreds of children who are going to be witnessing violence at home right and maybe somebody who suffers domestic violence is watching this program you want to share a short message for them and any helpline numbers or emails you can share yeah we uh, in the by the end of this uh, session i think we are going to put out numbers but uh, we have pcvc's number that i can go and give which is uh, it is a national it's called dwani and it's a national uh, domestic violence hotline and uh, people come from anywhere in india can give us a call it is a toll free number it's 1800 102 Seven two eight two, and it is a. It's not just by call. You can also email us at dv support at pcvconline dot org. You right. can chat with right. us uh, on our WhatsApp number, and all those numbers are going to be out uh, before the end of this session. Oh, can you can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Professor, I'm not sure you can hear me. We can hear you, Sam. All right. My question, uh, uh, Professor, is: uh, We are talking about people who are in cities largely. Uh, what about people, women who suffer domestic violence in rural areas, in villages? Do they have enough awareness about this? And do the press and the media? recognize this as a key issue and do they join hands to 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 fight this uh i i i think the uh, uh, i i should tell you this that the last two days we've been getting about we got about 100 120 calls yesterday and the same amount today and my colleagues are uh, every minute uh, attending to about uh, five calls and they are uh, 99% from the districts and they've got this number from the uh, uh, news channels which have uh, given out our uh, hotline numbers they have celebrities and uh, uh, film stars who are giving out our numbers and uh, uh, using the social media to spread the message that uh, support is available and uh, asking people also to uh, uh, share the numbers with their neighbors and their friends and i think this is helping a lot Uh, uh that's uh, the the reach uh, we can see the reach the, to the districts here right. and i think radio and tv is the uh, best way to uh, reach the districts at this point of time right and in terms of uh, the police coming home whenever a woman makes a call uh, are they sensitive are they uh do they treat this like any other investigation asking questions insensitively or do they have uh, enough awareness so i experienced this uh, last two weeks uh, we have we have we have called the police to uh, make res rescues and uh, even uh, uh, you know taken the complaints to them where they have gone there and uh, spoken to the uh, women directly and i see uh, the feedback that we have got from the uh, survivors and victims have been very positive that they've been very sensitive and if the women they go by what the woman, the victim or the woman wants and i think in that way uh, they have been extremely sensitive sam i think sam is maybe dialing back in but uh, meanwhile prasanna uh, hi sam you're back yeah Uh, we are getting some questions uh, also from uh, viewership. Uh, I think Sam, you're on mute right now. So maybe I'll maybe I'll ask uh, one question. Was just uh, Prasanna discussing uh, abuse against children in addition to uh, abuse against uh, women or members of the LGBTQ community? Can you speak a little bit about how children uh, are impacted by the the gender based uh, violence that's happening now thank you and i think sam's back yeah so 
So in domestic violence, all of us know that uh, children are uh, silent victims. Okay, they have been uh, uh, report from uh, UNICEF saying that about 90,000 kids uh, get, uh, uh, you know, are uh, wit witnessing violence uh, every year. Okay, and with the lockdown, with children not going to school and right there, we can see the number of uh, children that are getting impacted. Okay, and I don't know, it is probably going to be a hundred times more. And uh, the, uh, it's not just about, I think just witnessing this, uh, uh, the violence itself, even if it's not targeted di directly to them, witnessing the violence itself is going to be traumatic for the, ch for the children. And there we've had, uh, and when women call us, we've had them saying that, you know, he's biting the children, he's extremely physically abusive to the children, and there have been uh, uh, reports in the last uh, week which says that uh, there are several uh, calls to the uh, child helpline, children calling and asking for help, and there have been uh, child sexual abuse cases also. Thank you. I think Sam is back. Yeah, Sam, I think you're on mute. Am I audible now? Yes. Uh, Prasanna, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I can hear you. I me? Yes, Sam, go ahead. Okay, Prasanna, I was just asking whether is there a need after the lockdown for the government to reach out to women across the country to report the kind of domestic violence they suffered to understand the numbers we're talking about the quantum of this problem across the country. Sam, you need to repeat that. Prasanna, the question was the value of uh, reporting e uh, after the lockdown is over, the, the value of reporting to government, uh, even if you can't report in real time, uh, reporting later so that there can be some sort of accounting or report, you know, uh, uh, knowledge about what the extent of the problem was. I, I believe that was Sam's question. Um, I think the government are uh, uh, you know, already acting on it. We see a lot of news. Uh, uh, from the uh, police saying that uh, they're getting a lot, you know, the number of cases are increasing. And uh, I also saw news that uh, 12 all women police, uh, women police have been put on job and they're going house to house to find out, you know, uh, how women are. And uh, um, uh, of course, the, those who are unable to report now, I think uh, soon after the lockdown, we're expecting uh, right. uh, a huge uh, increase in the number of cases that are going to be reported. And I think the police uh, and the government are, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, are aware of that. Right, right, right. Thank you, thank you, Prasanna. I think it's now time for Lauren to take over for the questions she may have got from all those who are watching. Lauren, it's back to you. And we can also probably share those numbers of the helplines for Chennai, for Tamil Nadu, for the states across the, uh, across the country so people can take note of it. Lauren, it's back to you. Thank you so much, Sam. And thank you, Prasanna, uh, and both of you for that excellent conversation on such an important topic. We had an interesting question uh, that was raised. Can people, in, in, in addition to calling, can they send a WhatsApp message? So if they are in a situation where they do not have privacy or they don't have easy access to uh, a phone conversation, is a WhatsApp a viable way, uh, Prasanna, to communicate with PCVC or other uh, uh, platforms? Uh, we have a WhatsApp number that is 98408-8882, okay, which will also be shown at the end of uh, this session. And uh, people can WhatsApp us, people can chat with us, and this is a 24-7 uh, number. 
Excellent. Thank you. So WhatsApp, they can WhatsApp that number as they well. Can WhatsApp, and the only uh, caution there is that uh, to delete the call history uh, yes. once more. Very good advice. We have a question from uh, Shamran Bora. He said, for a minute, let's say active organizations are working to make sure such women are pulled out of the kind of misery they've experienced. But what, about, what after? What about bringing them out? What kind of initiatives are being taken to ensure they are uplifted or rehabilitated in life? Uh, what are your views? Uh, I think this is a general question. Uh, like uh, I can talk on what uh, PCVC does. So ours is a very comprehensive service. It's not just about uh, offering them shelter or uh, legal advice, or it's, it's a very comprehensive service. And after they uh, reach out to us, they might come to the shelter or they might be living with the parents or uh, in the community, but they can, we make sure we uh, educate, if they want to be educated, if they want to, uh, you know, learn some skill, we are there and we, uh, do not have an enterprise and say all of them have to learn, you know, making bags or anything like that. We go by what the uh, client uh, wishes to, learn, you know, wants to be and wishes to, and uh, get, you know, make sure that they get that skill and uh, the job and the career they want to. Okay, and that's that's how we see that uh, our uh, services are very comprehensive. Thank you. I think I think this next question is more for Sam. Actually, it's it's about or also you, Prasanna. It's how has uh, gender-based violence changed in terms of the ability of the media to cover on it without being a, 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 you know stigmatizing uh, or uh, something that's considered an internal affair. How how has the ability uh, of the media to report and cover gender-based violence as a public health issue? Uh, uh, progressed over time or changed over time. Oh, Sam, I think you're on mute still. Maybe I'll, there you are. Okay, I think you can hear me now. I think yes, over I time, uh, it has, uh, the way we report these issues uh, have changed. And uh, it's particularly easy for uh, the print medium. They can write, uh, they don't have to take pictures, they don't have to interview them on camera. It's easier for them. But uh, on TV, we may not report that many cases, but we are certainly uh, reinventing how to tell these difficult stories without uh, revealing their identities. Early, of course, there was a lot of reservation by such people to, to share on camera, but now there are different ways where we can either record their audio without anyone knowing their uh, identity. We can still use uh, make that into a television story. And we have excellent uh, graphics designing system. So we don't, without having to show their houses, their workplace, uh, without having to show the victim at all, we can still meet them in, 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 in confidence, get all the information, uh, get it checked through the police. And if, it, if it's a kind of a police case, and then we can do that. But I think still we can do better. Uh, more number of cases can be reported. But uh, the fact that Victims haven't come forward in such numbers to confidently report. That's that's a deterrent. But I think uh, newspapers, in comparison, they do a slightly uh, they more reporting on this. Uh, but I think these are areas where uh, television news channels, particularly national news channels, uh, ought to give them give, give some space and make sure it's sensitively reported, so that it also becomes a deterrent and people also would be aware of the kind of things that happen behind closed doors in the form of uh, domestic violence. I just want to add there that, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I'm on the spiel for 20 years and 20 years back, uh, people, you know, victims wouldn't talk to the press. Okay, they would hesitate to speak to the press. But now, you know, with the uh, with what uh, Sam just said that, you know, they don't reveal their names and uh, there are other ways that they can mask their faces and they can uh, still speak out. I think that has uh, encouraged them to tell their stories. And also, I, uh, the, I should uh, acknowledge that now they even give out the helpline numbers, which is uh, with every case that they put. Most of the time, not every time, but most of the time, I see them uh, give out their helpline numbers, which is, which is great. That is progress. Thank you. We have a question uh, from uh, the field. Sometimes 
I feel this violence has been inflicted because of the mental health issues faced by the perpetrator. In this case, what should be done with the perpetrator? Um, well, I, I think uh, the, uh, if, if the person feels so, but most, uh, mostly uh, it's not a mental health issue, but it is about uh, power and control. But if for some reason the person is taking uh, medication or the, uh, 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 you know, they feel that a, clo a person close to him feels that there is a mental health issue, then they, he has to be taken to a psychiatrist or, you know, Thank uh, you. Men mental health professional. Agreed. How about this question from Bula Presi? Um, has there been a rise in access to pornographic sites and what is the, uh, with, with the lockdown and what is the impact that, that you see on gender-based violence at present? Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, uh, cyber violence is on the increase and it's going to be on the increase. With more women uh, accessing the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the accessing technology, uh, all of us know that uh, we are using uh, platforms like Zoom and more of Skype and uh, access to uh, so internet and social media sites and so on. And, and uh, that has brought about an increase in uh, uh, cyber stalking and uh, you know, offensive messages, unwanted videos and showing pornography and uh, uh, chat, uh, chat, you know, group chats and so on. And so uh, that 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 is that is been on an increase, and it is going to be on an increase. That's a, that's thank you. That's very concerning. I have a question here, uh, Pasana, on the rate of conviction and the challenges that might be had in in terms of building evidence. Uh, particularly during lockdown, or uh, I think uh, during lockdown is is we can start there, and then just in, in general. Uh, well, Lockdown or no lockdown, I think uh, uh, we don't, they, you know, we don't need evidence. Most of the time, the, when even when uh, victims call us, they say that, you know, there is nothing that I can show. You don't need any evidence. If you come to uh, an organization like uh, PCVC, we uh, trust and believe what you say. And, uh, and uh, you know, when it's the same with sexual harassment at workplace. There is no evidence that you need. So uh, I think people don't have to worry about that at all. And when you even when you go to the police, there is there is there is a way that they look at uh, uh, crimes against women and uh, compared to traditional crimes when it comes to evidence. Thank you. That connects a bit to a question we've received from Anjali Alur. Do you think COVID nineteen has provided a platform to question the harmful gender stereotypes? To, to question harmful gender stereotypes as the crisis has altered many cultural or institutional uh, forms that have, that have previously hindered gender equality advancements. I don't know what examples that those might be, but uh, has COVID provided a platform to question any stereotypes? Oh, well, I, I don't see any, anything different now in the, you know, that has not been there earlier. Uh, probably the uh, uh, if the question is related to household chores that have been that have been shared by uh, partners at home, uh, if that that is uh, you know that inequality has been questioned now, if if the person is asking something like that, uh, well, I do not know what is actually happening inside. Uh, whether women are, I think women are still doing, uh, you know, even though we are saying work from home. I find women working from home and doing the house, household chores and looking after the kids and putting the uh, uh, clothes in the washing machine. So everything is there, you know, we're most women. So, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe we have to do a research or a study to see that has, it, has there been a, a shift in that? Yes, good. Okay. And, if, and a sort of a last follow on question is the distinction between domestic violence and then domestic duties, like ex excessive domestic duties that are being placed on some individuals during the lockdown, things that maybe multiple people were doing before, now one person is doing. And how would you distinguish between the two? I think I just answered that, okay. 
uh, we are we don't know what's actually and it can't be in every home that uh, this might be happening but i am uh, i feel that women are we are will be taking in more jobs and with children there and they having to take care of the children let me give you this case where she said that uh, the stress is so much that he works from home and his work starts at 9 o'clock she also works from home but she has to make sure that there is not a single noise uh, from the kids that is heard otherwise uh, you know the day, the day is gone and she will not know what hit her okay so although she is working at home the responsibility is huge okay while uh, for the uh, partner it is uh, about work and being there uh, in meet virtual meetings and so on so I, i'm i'm giving you a live example and that's a good one all right well with that i want to say thank you so much to sam and to prasanna and i'd like to give the opportunity uh, for uh, for uh, our uh, colleague to share some of the hotline numbers that Prasanna has been mentioning for um, PCVC. I want to thank all of the uh, participants and followers and, and the people who, who signed in with their questions, but also uh, with their, as a sign of their interest. I hope that uh, this uh, conversation uh, will continue beyond uh, today's Facebook live chat. Um, again, thank you so much. Uh, I would ask for my colleagues to show the, uh, the hotline numbers now. And with that, I thank you. So much for your time and for your uh, service. Thank you. Thank you. Sam.